Are you like me? And do you ever imagine the first guy to ever try CPR? I mean, that must have been a little bit of a hard sell to the people watching. Um, Carl, thanks for pulling her out from the watchers, but we've had some complaints from the community about you immediately rounding first base on her. She lived though, right? Surely you're not taking credit for her brother's miraculous brain over yonder. And imagine his particular surprise when he raised his eyes from food and prayer only to find you with your dirty paws all over his sister. That was because I had to restart her heart. Carl P. Robertson. <laughs> Time she is not in love with you. First me too in history. Poor Carl, who's just trying to help. I'll admit, I, uh, I learned CPR. For completely selfish reasons. Saving a life, let's just face it, has got to be the most powerful feeling on planet Earth. I mean, besides holding that slobber right above your brother's face. <laughs> the symphony of screams. Some empires are built on less fear than that. You know what I mean? So anyway, back to CPR. I asked my CPR mentor, teacher, guru, I don't know what to call our relationship. It's complicated. I said, Sensei, is there any time I should not save a life? Maybe they don't like dogs. Maybe they're particularly smelly. Maybe they're just, you know, a little unattractive. What if, you know... It's Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, he told me something that always stuck with me. He said, stand up, Dad. That's what he calls me. No matter their race, their culture, their gender, their age. Doesn't matter. Even if they're smelly. You should always do CPR until emergency personnel arrive. Listen, we pay people to determine when there's no more hope left. You, you, Padawan, you are to remain full of hope at all times. Continue CPR until the authorities arrive. My heart soared. And that's the thing you don't know going into CPR training. I went in thinking I was going to save a life, but really the life that was saved was mine. So anyways. Fast forward to present day. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be invited to any more funerals anytime soon. Not okay. Especially not one with an open casket. But to be fair, I, I, I never gave up hope until many, many authorities arrived. They, finally, they, they, had to, they had to pull me away. Sensei, Sensei ghosted me after that. To be fair, Grandma ghosted us too. Despite my best efforts. But I did learn something that day. Very valuable. Mortuary makeup tastes like garbage. <laughs> no, okay, is this a true story? This isn't a true, is this a true story? Garbage! They need to do something about that. I mean, come on! It's the last thing they're ever gonna put on their face and we make it taste like that? Give me a break.